I am old, older than thought in your species. Hello, beautiful people. Happy Friday. We are doing First Flush Friday. So I am super excited. This uh, actually is one of my first flushes um, probably since November. And it's February now, so it's been about four months since I've had a good flush. Uh, I've been having a lot of issues with contamination um, and just working out my method for hydrating grain. Uh, I was really struggling to get the hydration right, so some of the jars were taking, you know, two months to partially colonize. Um, so I'm very excited to wake up this morning to a nice flush, nice dense flush. So let's check it out. Um, first thing you'll notice is those two dead spots. Uh, that was right by the filter for this uh, custom container. So it's actually not filtered, so it's the fresh air exchange port. Uh, when I first introduced fruiting conditions, I s opened those completely, and I realized that there's a lot of air flow in my clean room because I have a HVAC system pump in positive pressure air from outside. So Anyways, it really dried the cake out right where those airports are. Now I know in the future, I'm just going to open them partially, maybe halfway or even less than that. Um, but this cake is looking pretty dry on those sides specifically. So I'm definitely going to want to dunk this after I collect my first flush. But I am really excited. Um, this is, you know, obviously this is the best work to do in mycology the most rewarding the most fun in my opinion is really harvesting the flush so come enjoy it with me um i do the pull and twist technique i don't like cutting because i don't want to leave stumps um it probably would be a lot quicker to cut to be honest especially with this dense canopy uh, before i tell you what strain it is i want to mention that all of this is for research purposes only. And I do not condone the use of psychedelic mushrooms at all. But this is albino avery. And these are known to have very dense canopies. But these mushrooms are actually very small. My species, my strain, my genetics. Uh, I do wish they were a little bit bigger, to be honest, a little bit taller. But the canopy is so dense, you guys. Um, it's just like, I put my hand on it at one point. It's a solid mat of just caps, stems, pins underneath. You can see me just pulling them apart, pulling them out. Not too much of the substrate came out on the stem, which is good. It does happen here and there, but I'm pulling and twisting to minimize breaking up that substrate layer. I also don't want it in the product too much but it's just cocoa core, organic cocoa core, organic vermiculite, organic gypsum. So there's nothing to worry about as far as consumption goes, especially considering this is a fully colonized cake. So yeah, and you'll notice me pulling out some of these small pins. So, or aborts, I should say. Aborts are, basically it is my second flush. It is my next flush coming in. I've noticed with this, these genetics, albino avery, that it's not a uniform flush. It's really like a continuous process. So I'm curious how dunking it right after this is going to work. Um, I've never really dunked before. And so I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm relatively new to taking this all seriously and you know, hopefully we'll get three to four flushes out of this. That's kind of the goal. And I want to see how I can optimize the process because my first tubs back in November, I was really harvesting continuously. I'd see a couple mushrooms, the veil would break, and I would harvest them. Here, all these mushrooms, the veil is far gone. But 
albino avery drops clear spores apparently or no spores at all i've also heard i don't really know but i can let them go longer i could even go another eight hours i think until that cap is totally inverted to harvest but i saw a good window now since i uh, woke up early and i could do it before i go to work Here's a big cluster. A lot of these grow out in clusters like that. Makes it really interesting looking when it dries out. But it does pull up more substrate when these bigger clusters are there. But like I said, guys, this was really dense canopy. And I'm really excited to get more flushes from this one. This, this tub, uh, I considered it high risk which what, what I mean by that is I, there was known uncolonized grain that went into the spawning process. So for, to me, that's high risk. Now, if you watch my video on how I spawned a bulk, you'll see that I actually remove all the uncolonized grains and I do not include them. So for this, I got lucky actually that this, this one had a flush I'm hoping to get more. I see no signs of contamination. A couple blue aborts here and there, which tells me that something's going on, either with the moisture content, um, potentially contamination, but I really need to see some type of, type of trichoderma spots, which would be very alarming to me. I would just pretty much throw it out. I'd, I'd of course harvest whatever flush, but I would throw it out if I saw any contamination because it's just not worth it for me to deal with that and be propagating any type of bacteria, especially in my grow bin, my grow room, or my clean room, I should say, has probably maybe six, seven tubs now, large monotubs. Like this is a very small one for me. I only have one of these. Like I said, I use it for maybe a higher risk um, jars or just kind of if I need a spare tub with some leftover grain and leftover substrate. But this one got a good flush. I'll leave in the comments below how many dried grams I end up with. As you can see, I set them in the dehydrator. I dehydrate them at one or er, 65 Celsius for four hours. It'll likely take five or six hours. So I set it in for four. It's still going right now. We'll see how much time it needs. Sometimes it varies. Here's a cool technique for dunking the tub. I do it in a separate tub. and kind of just put the lid on it, kind of keep it clean. I've seen some people soak it in the bathtub or something like that, but I really like to just keep everything isolated. Also the water here, I used warm water. So this water was at 74 degrees Fahrenheit. I've also seen online that you want to do a cold dunk, so I might have messed up. Uh, we're going to learn from it, though, and see what the next flush is like. I'm assuming you want a colder water because contamination, potentially. You don't want bacteria growing in warm water, especially if I'm going to be dunking this for, well, I'll be doing this one for probably two and a half hours. I would Ideally, it would have been four hours, but it's going to be two and a half because I don't have time for that. So I'm making some notes that the first flush, what date it was, and just gonna let it sit here for a while. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining me on this Friday, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And thanks for checking out my channel. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions about my process. I'd love to explain anything to you guys. So peace out.